What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is late on hump night, and um, tomorrow's already Thirsty Thursday, two weeks away from the NFL draft. Um, needs you guys to do a little something. Today, Joseph Heatherly's mom's funeral was today and um he's definitely down in the dumps and things i've talked to him a couple times today and things and he put it as he feels like he's an orphan because both of his parents are dead and he doesn't have any siblings and so on so if you see joseph be sure to go ahead you know and let him know you're thinking about him and things um a couple of things that are interesting one is I, I'm so excited about this offseason in comparison to last year where everything seemed to be just terrible. In fact, it's kind of crazy because, you know, there's not much that we can bitch about. And, you know, we sit here and we look at this and we feel good about the moves they made. Now, they may all blow up in our face. That, that's a possibility. But you feel like at least that the store's open and that they're trying to take care of the customers being us. Um... We've got some players that literally that this is time to shit or get off the toilet. You know, I'm still wondering what's going on with Jarrell Cox. You know, it seemed like he was a guy that had so much promise and things. And thus far, you just can't seem to get him on the field. Now, I know he was coming back from an ACL last year, but they said everything was good going into training camp. But somehow it didn't go. Then there's Semi Fioko. Another one of those guys that, you know, we thought that, you know, Semi, we first saw Semi that first year, two years ago, man, we thought, okay, this guy's going to be a baller. But last year, he couldn't get on the field with as bad as our wide receiving core was. And this is one of those times where you hope that, you know, this is your opportunity now to try and step up. Fortunately, he's out working out with Dak Prescott and Jake Ferguson and stuff at Dak Prescott's, uh, you know, field that he has his house. Next week we start actually OTAs, so they're actually going to start getting in some more work besides the work that's going on. And we know that um, Micah Parsons has been working out with B. John Robinson. We know that Zeke's been working out with Dak and so on. And we've got, you know, players in place, which is good because there's still people that are out there that don't know who their quarterback is going to be. A la the Jets. The Jets apparently got a little scared off because Aaron Rodgers going on the Pat McAfee show. Pat McAfee, a national treasure, mind you. Pat McAfee goes to show you that going to school to be a journalist does not matter anymore in this day and age. Um, because Pat McAfee is getting twice the amount of views that first take or uh, Undisputed gets. And he is literally the guy that's got Aaron Rodgers on the show every single week. And on that show, Aaron Rodgers was saying, uh, going into the uh, Fortress of Darkness, you know, to meditate and all that, that he was about 90% retired. Apparently, the Jets and Green Bay actually had the deal in place until they heard that statement. And so now, Woody Johnson, is it Woody Johnson? Woody Johnson, I, I think it's, yeah, Woody Johnson, I can, just for some reason, it's Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Woody Johnson got a little scared about that idea about him being retired. But I got to be honest with you, what he really should be scared of is what Aaron Rodgers has actually been doing the last two years. Because, you know, it, it's funny because I listen to, to people like, man, if we just had Aaron Rodgers, man, you know, we're going to the Super Bowl. And I'm kind of like, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Here's the thing. Uh, let me just go down the numbers for last year. And I want to see how people spin this. Because he was 11th in the NFL in yardage. Now, he played the whole season. 3,695 yards. Now, I know they'll go through and say, well, he, you know, he lost Devontae Adams and stuff. But I thought they said that not having weapons isn't a thing. Because Dak Prescott lost his two of his top targets from last year, Cedric Wilson and Amari Cooper. 
and everybody talked about him being trash, but somehow they still scored. They still scored when he was in there the most points in the NFL. TDs, Aaron Rodgers, 26 TDs for seventh in the NFL. Only one of two categories that he's in the top 10. Completion percentage, 20%. 64.6 interceptions ninth with 12 um, yards per completion Dinkin and Duncan Dinkin and Duncan when they used to talk about Dak Prescott was Dinkin and Duncan he was throwing for more than 6.8 yards per completion that was 23rd in the NFL Aaron Rodgers, the bad man, was actually bad last year. 23rd, 6.8 yards per completion. Um, completion percentage. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. QBR, 17th, 91.1. And rating. 27th at 39.3. So, Woody Johnson should actually be more scared of the, these numbers because this is not, this is a trend. In 2020, MVP, 70%, 0.7 completion percentage, 4,299 yards. 48 TDs, 48, five interceptions, a 121.5 rating. The next year, it dropped to 68.9, 4,100 yards, 37 TDs, four interceptions to a 111. Then he fell off a cliff to the 64 completion percentage. 3,695 yards, TD percentage, oh, excuse me, TDs, 26, 12 interceptions, and his rating dropped by 20%, or 20 points. I have to say, the bad man was average last year. And if you take out the game against Mike McCarthy, where he got three TD passes, that's the only game that he had three TD passes. Clearly, he got up for Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys. So, Woody Johnson shouldn't be scared of the retirement. He should be scared on whether or not Aaron Rodgers is still that guy. Anyway. It is a late, it is 11 o'clock. Gonna get up early, get back on the red brick house. I got a full day's worth of work and then some to try and get everything ready for an electrical and plumbing and framing inspection, I hope, on Friday. It's gonna be a big, big push, and I love a big push. Whew. Remember, good people, tell the people you love, you love them. You might not get the chance again. And I love you guys. Peace out.